This presentation requires two documents that you can download on the resources page of the project lesson or from the course materials page on the Blackboard site. You will need the documents called Frost Practice Poems and Poetry Explication Model. Use your documents to take notes to help you complete the discussion board assignment in this presentation as well as the first essay in the course. The two poems I am using in this presentation happen to be sonnets, a particular kind of poem with 14 lines and a noticeable rhyme pattern. We will by no means read only sonnets in this course, but these two will work for today's purpose. I know that poetry is difficult for some of you to understand, and I want to give you some suggestions in this presentation on how to begin reading a poem. This first sonnet, designed by Robert Frost, is also the poem used in the Explication Model essay. As I said about sonnets, they have 14 lines and a noticeable rhyme scheme or rhyme pattern. I marked this one for you, showing where letters indicate that the last words of lines rhyme with other lines. For example, all the lines marked with the letter A have an ite sound, even if it's spelled differently to get that sound. So the lines marked with A end in white, blight, right, kite, white again, height, and night. You can see for yourself that whenever a new sound appears, we use another letter, so that this poem ends up with three different rhyming sounds. And there's a pattern of rhyme. A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A in the first stanza, or octave in this case of eight lines. In the second stanza, or sestet of six lines, the poet plays around with the rhyming so that the pattern is, is more like an A-C-A-A-C-C. -A -A -C -C. There are a variety of rhyme patterns used in different sonnets, but they're usually organized in the octave and loosely organized in the sestet. We try to find meaning, meaning in such patterns, looking to see if rhymed words create emphasis, for example, to draw our attention to them. The other thing I want to say about this uh, slide is that this is probably what has driven you away from the study of poetry in the past. We haven't even looked at the whole poem and already I'm turning it into a science experiment by looking at some sort of a weird pattern of rhyming. So let's look at a better way to begin reading this poem. Now this won't work with all poems but Frost is nice enough to write his poems in sentences with sentence punctuation. Still, the capital letters at the beginning of each line can throw you off so that you might not initially see that he is writing in sentences. If you'll notice, this poem's octave or first eight lines is one not-so-long sentence. I've printed it out here like a regular sentence, keeping Frost's commas and closing period and taking out the capital letters from the original. So let's read it as if it were a sentence in a paragraph. I found a dimpled spider, fat and white, on a white heel all, holding up a moth like a white piece of rigid satin cloth, assorted characters of death and blight, mixed ready to begin the morning rite, like the ingredients of a witch's broth, a snowdrop spider, a flower like a froth, and dead wings carried like a paper kite. Still not that easy to um, unfold in meaning, but uh, maybe it's getting a little bit easier because you're not trying to read it like poetry that rhymes. You're not trying to hit on those rhyming words because that can sort of upset the sound of a regular sentence. Also, the use of dashes in this sentence incorporate an explanatory phrase, so let's leave that out of our second reading. I'm going to read it now, and I'm going to leave out the words that are in between the dashes. I found a dimpled spider, fat and white, on a white heel all, holding up a moth like a white piece of rigid satin cloth, a snowdrop spider, a flower like a froth, and dead wings carried like a paper kite. That wasn't so bad. That sounds a little bit more like a sentence, and it's, you know, pretty clear that the speaker here is just describing something that he or she has found 
a spider um, sitting on a white flower and holding up a moth. So there are those three items. And then, you know, after you figure out the sentence, then you can look at anything that extra that might be inserted into it, like the part that's in between the dashes here, and to try to figure out what is meant. So what is in there? Assorted characters of death and blight mixed ready to begin the morning right, like the ingredients of a witch's broth. That's still a little bit cryptic, but I'm going to let you um, read the sample essay and see what the writer had to say about these particular lines. I've written out the second stanza here on a separate slide because it's different from the first stanza. That, that octave or those first eight lines were written as one sentence, but the sestet or the last six lines um, are written out as a series of questions with an ending statement uh, instead of one long sentence. But still, I tried to write it as a paragraph so that, uh, that the rhyming wouldn't distract you from what it might mean. You can always go back to the original to see if the rhyme offers any new meaning after you've figured out um, what the poem in general might mean. So what do we have here? The speaker is asking questions about what he has found. And you'll notice that the speaker is trying to figure out the meaning of the items just as you are, but he may have different questions than you would have. He's clearly wondering how this little scene came together and whether there is something bigger that made it all happen, that made it all come together, and what that might be. And so after you, f you think about those questions then and, and what the, the speaker is trying to get at, then the title, Design, um, might suggest what it is that he's wondering about. So what does this second stanza sound like? What had that flower to do with being white, the wayside blue and innocent heel all? What brought the kindred spider to that height, then steered the white moth thither in the night? What but design of darkness to appall, if design govern in a thing so small? So, you know, he's wondering how those things came together, and we're learning, for example, that that flower the spider is sitting on should be blue, and instead, uh, we learned in the first stanza that it's white, so that's something to consider, too. So I suggest that uh, you stop here and read the sample explication essay before looking at the next poem in this presentation. But if you do decide to move on in the presentation, be sure to come back here and follow these guidelines of what to look for when you're reading this sample explication. Remember that your first essay assignment in the course is to write your own exp explication of a poem, and we'll talk about what poems you can choose from uh, when, when you um, are able to read the uh, assignment details. So here's another Frost sonnet. It's called Putting in the Seed, and I haven't marked the rhyme pattern in this poem as I did with the first one, you know, with the A's and B's and C's, but you can try it out yourself, putting letters where uh, any end-of-line words happen to rhyme, and just keep in mind that every time you come to a new rhyme, you would want to move on to another letter. So you would want to mark all the A's, all the B's, all the C's, and if it goes farther than that, and sometimes it does, then you know you would have D's and E's and so on. And neither have I written the sentences as a paragraph. I've just left it in its regular poetic form, but I'm going to try to read them like regular sentences uh, instead of being distracted by the rhyme, and that's something that you can do in a poem. You can read a poem through and, and hit on the rhyming words, and then you can look at it to see if it's actually written in complete sentences and try to read it in a different way. First thing you might notice when you're looking to see where the first sentence ends is that this uh, first sentence in this poem runs into the first line of the second stanza. So it's a pretty long sentence. And then in addition, Kind of like the dashes in the last poem, there is a parenthetical insertion here of two lines, uh, kind of in the middle of the first stanza. And um, I'm going to leave them out of my reading 
and come back to them. Uh, so I'm going to try to read that first sentence, leaving out the parts that are in parentheses. You come to fetch me from my work tonight when supper's on the table, and we'll see if I can leave off burying the white soft petals fallen from the apple tree and go along with you ere you lose sight of what you came for and become like me, slave to a springtime passion for the earth. It's kind of interesting. Um, clearly the speaker is talking to somebody else, talking to a listener, but we don't hear that other voice. Uh, and then um, what is what is the speaker saying? Um, let me point out a couple of things that um, might throw you. Uh, the use of the word air is a old poetic term that uh, can mean before. So when the speaker says, and go along with you, air you lose sight, you could substitute before for meaning, and it would be, and go along with you before you lose sight of what you came for. And then that probably makes more sense to you if you're not familiar with that word air. Um, and just maybe the way that the speaker says some things might seem a little bit odd to you. You might not say them that way. Um, for example, you come to fetch me from my work tonight you know, you might think, what does that mean? Oh, come and get me when supper's ready is kind of what he's saying, but um, he tries to say it in a little bit of a more poetic way. And we'll see if I can leave off. Uh, we'll see if I can stop burying the white soft petals. And I'll tell you right now, I'm not sure what that means, burying the... S why, why would somebody bury flowers from an apple tree? I'm not a farmer. <laughs> So that might be that would be something you might want to to look up. That might be something you'd want to research. And then the second uh, part of the poem, which is another complete sentence, is uh, is this being spoken to that listener, or has the listener already gone to fix supper, and uh, is the speaker speaking to him or herself? I don't know, but let's listen to that last sentence. That. This is after the speaker has said, you know, you better leave before you become a slave to a springtime passion for the earth, like me. How love burns through the putting in the seed, on through the watching for that early birth, when just as the soil tarnishes with weed, the sturdy seedling with arched body comes shouldering its way and shedding the earth crumbs. This is a really difficult sentence. And you might notice that even though I tried to read it as a regular sentence, I couldn't help hitting on those words seed and weed. And it was just the way the sentence was put together um, that it just it just seemed natural for me to kind of briefly stop on those words. How love burns through the putting in the seed, on through the watching for that early birth. You know, that's kind of odd. Why is love in a capital L? Um, why is putting in the seed have a capital P and a capital S? You know, what, is, what does that emphasis mean? What is this person talking about? Is this last line describing or making a comment on what he meant by his springtime passion for the earth? I think it is. Um, I'm just not sure exactly what that means, that last sentence. How does this describe what his springtime passion is? What is it that he has a passion for? And so now, you'll try interpreting this poem. This is your first discussion board assignment, and there are guidelines in the thread for this discussion on the Blackboard site. As you can see, coming up with the entire meaning at once would be hard, and it wouldn't really be a discussion anyway. Try to determine meaning a little at a time working out and refining meaning with your classmates. I'm not looking for a right answer or for perfect interpretations. This is a chance for you to work within the class group and help each other figure it out. I will participate too. Good luck. <laughs>